I have a confession to make. I've been gathering in-store grocery shopping footage and not sharing them with you. In my defense though, I wanted a good way to showcase them. So I came up with a video idea to highlight some of my best grocery shopping deals from 2019. So you have a more holistic view of how I shop and what our staples are. I'll share my last grocery haul of the year and hopefully through the footage and my banter, I'll offer you some tips along the way as well. Before you think all I do is shop or scout discount stores, we grocery shop anywhere from two to four times a month. Most of my bargain shopping is done once a month and it's usually a really large endeavor that takes me around three to four hours where I visit at least four stores on one route. Sometimes this means that I have to start my trip before the sun comes up just so I can be at the store right when it opens. I even have to go in bad weather, but most of the time we're lucky enough to have sunny days. We really do pay for that weather tax here in California. I plan my trips to minimize gas and time wasted by visiting the furthest store first, then on the way back home visit the remaining stores. So that I'm pretty much driving in one big, oddly shaped loop. For produce, I've really been loving Aldi savers. These are usually limited time local items that Aldi sells at very low prices. I like to think of them as loss leaders, those very low priced groceries that are highlighted in the circulars that makes us want to visit the store. Well, Aldi saver items are some of the lowest prices that I've seen on certain produce out of all of my local stores. And the quality is good as long as you know what to pick. Like these grapes, I had to search for this one good bag. I put it next to a bad bag to show you the difference. The main thing to look at is the stem for grapes. If the stems are dried and wrinkly like this one, then it's not a good bag. You can even tell at a glance that the stems in the bad bag are mostly brown. If they're green and plump and they look alive, then you have a good bag of grapes. I always flip the bag over and check the bottom to make sure that it's not bruised and watery. Green signs at my Aldi usually hold limited time seasonal items like this 10 pound bag of potatoes for $1.95. That is an excellent price and will be eaten very quickly at our house. Slow cooked, baked, and boiled are our cooking methods of choice and they're perfect for any meal of the day. I love checking these clearance racks at my Kroger store. They always seem to have some great deals on ripe and ready to eat produce. I always feel like I hit the jackpot when I see bell peppers like these there. They're really large and I can't tell why they're even marked for discount. Also dispersed along all the other vegetables are woohoo stickers. We love these and my son and I make a game to find them. It's like the Where's Waldo or I Spy of saving money. Those discount stickers usually exist for most stores. You just need to familiarize yourself and play the game and eventually you'll develop an eye for it. The living lettuces I love because my son eats them and they last for a very long time. Also the reward is great when looking for those stickers like these two pounds of ready to eat strawberries for one dollar. They just needed to be washed and trimmed and they were ready to be frozen in the freezer to be used in smoothies. Produce at the 99 cent stores can be really hit or miss, but when it's hit, they really knock it out of the park. $1.99 for a two and a half bag of spinach was a really great deal. I also like buying minimally processed produce like frozen veggies, which are inexpensive and convenient to have on hand. Pickles will last way beyond any date stamped on it, and applesauce is convenient for school snacks and baking. Canned tomatoes always seem to find a way into my cart. Shopping at ethnic markets that often sells imperfect produce definitely keeps me on my toes, but the reward is a great low price. Considering the huge price difference on so many items, the savings really adds up quickly. Some things to watch out for are cracks or cuts from the staff opening the bags, slimy or dried out plants. Luckily, this cilantro was neither, but when it gets to this price point, I usually need to pick over it really well. I also try to stay clear of produce with holes from pests in them. Like in this pile of ginger, we want the ones with smooth skins and no holes. For tomatoes, I like them to be firm and without bruising or unnatural blemishes. To figure this out, I pick them up 
and give them a good gentle squeeze. If it doesn't have a give to it, then it passes my first test. The next test is the weight test. Picking up produce will give me an idea of what tomato in this case is supposed to weigh. There were some tomatoes here that were obviously much lighter than others, and that means that they have less water in them. Generally though, if it doesn't have any give to it and feels similar in weight to the others, then that's a keeper. The extra few minutes that it takes to pick through everything is really worth it. And I learned always to keep a tissue or wipe in my pocket to wipe my hands with afterwards. Buying produce that is in season is another saving tip. And when combined with the cast offs from mainstream stores, then the savings is even bigger. Beans are a definite staple at our house. If you've been following me for any length of time, you probably know that Peruano beans are our favorite. But we also eat black beans, garbanzos, white beans, red beans, lentils, split peas, green and yellow. They're all awesome. I like getting most of them from the 99 cent store because they have a fairly low price at a dollar per pound. I also know that this store has a very high turnover rate because I frequently see the staff stocking empty shelves, which means I get fresher beans than mainstream markets that often sell dusty, overpriced bags of beans. Anything less than a dollar per pound of beans is a good stock up price for me. I'll buy them, bring them home, and store them in washed out 5 gallon pickle jars. Tinned beans are great and convenient too, and I stock up on them when they're 50 cents or less a can. We do prefer to eat slow cooked beans though because they're tastier and they really take so little effort on our part. Beans and legumes are a delicious staple around here. I also visit bulk bins to buy mung beans that aren't available to me unless I go to larger Asian markets, which I can't always do. And these are so great for sprouting. A small amount of beans makes a large amount of sprouts with very little effort. Going on to cereals and breads. For cereals, I try to go for whole wheat type cereal. Surprisingly, my son loves Fiber One cereal, and I was lucky enough to find this generic version of it at Grocery Outlet. It tastes just like the Fiber One, and at 99 cents a box, that's a great price. He is a child though, so sometimes I will buy the less healthy options as a treat when the price is right. I try to pay $1 a box for cereal, but I'll go up to two and buy less. For bread, I do prefer to make them, but but don't always have time, so I get them from the clearance racks at my Kroger or wait for sales. The rolls we get there heat up very well in a heavy bottom skillet and it's ready once we've gotten ready for the morning. For bagged bread, I try to pay $1 or less per loaf. These freeze really well in their original bag and make for a great breakfast. And there's also breadcrumbs. I've not seen a bag like this at the 99 cent store or ever again, but it's a two and a half pound restaurant size bag of panko breadcrumbs. This stores really well in the freezer and works really well to stretch out meat based meals. Moving on to grains, that's another staple here. Oats of all kinds are eaten, steel cut, rolled oat bran. My buy price is about $1 per pound. And I know that it can be purchased for less at other stores like Sprouts that usually offers them at 79 cents a pound. But I don't go there often unless nuts are on sale and it's far away from me so I'll have to drive. On this one particular day, I needed just oats so my son and I could make cookies for his school project. Instead of driving to the store that I know that has a lower price, I chose to walk to my local Ralph's. I wasn't thrilled when I got there because even the cheapest packaged oats ended up costing over a dollar a pound. But just a few steps down to the bulk bins at the end of that same aisle offered a much better price. So always check the bulk bins if you have them. Even if I did have to pay for the prepackaged though, I would have still come out ahead because I didn't drive to get the cheaper price at the other store. This five pound bag of cornmeal was at my 99 cent store and that makes for a really nice breakfast porridge as well as cornbread and muffins. Rice is another buy item for us. We prefer the medium grain rice also called calrose, but will also buy any long grain jasmine rice. I try to aim to pay 50 cents a pound, but will pay up to a dollar per pound. And we keep flowers of all kinds on hand. I couldn't believe this organic wheat flower sitting at the 99 cent store. I bought 10 pounds worth for $2 and stored it in my freezer. This made several loads.
loaves of homemade bread and rolls. I also keep white flour from Aldi on hand for the special occasion to bake goods. I've never seen this rice flour before and I would have picked it up if we didn't already have rice flour at home. Pasta is another staple for us. We often host guests at our house throughout the year and this is always a crowd pleaser. My stock up price is 50 cents per package. My son was surprised to hear that I wanted us to buy 11. Buy 11 of these. Can you put 11 in? But helped me load the cart up with these pastas anyway. I say this in the most loving, non-offensive way possible. If you're wondering if something is a good deal and you see a bunch of Asians around it, it's probably a good deal. I'm Chinese and five foot seven. Little old women, not even five feet tall, have pushed and elbowed me out of their way. See this lady swooped in right in front of me. I think it's hilarious. Anyway, I'm vegetarian, so I like to get my protein from tofu like all these other people. I almost always buy the most firm one that I can get. The curds are more tightly packed, which means that you're getting more product for your money. I love throwing it in a smoothie. I like to think of it as a solid piece of unsweetened soy milk. Eggs go fast here, and even at grocery outlet, they're well over a dollar. I save my egg buying for Aldi where I get larger eggs for under $1 per dozen. With the way we go through eggs, the savings adds up. I'm always sure to do a quick check of all the eggs by making sure that all of them move from the bottom. This is the fastest way that I know to make sure that none of them are cracked. For nuts, when Sprouts has them on sale, I stock up on a couple pounds and keep them in the freezer. For actual meat, I do prefer to buy the meats that are marked down because otherwise they would go to waste. This is Aldi chicken with $2 off stickers. With these items, I always look for the smallest package I can find. This way, I'm effectively paying less per pound. This clip was from my Ralph's. Normally, ground turkey is marked down to $1.99 per package, and I'm very happy with that price. I couldn't believe my eyes at these 99 cent stickers, so I stacked up on as many as my freezer could hold and there was still plenty left for other shoppers. Ground beef is another item that I like to stock up on at $1.99 per pound. I haven't had to buy ground meat this year since these couple of stock up sessions shown here. And just a tip, I'm not sure if this is really widely known, but if you're shopping at Kroger and see a sign like this, $5 off of 5, and that product has a Woohoo sticker, the discount will usually apply as long as that sticker is generated properly. In this example, the scan needs to read as Farmer John's sausage for $209, not reduced meat at $209. These sausages rang up at $1.09 after the $5 off 5 discount was applied. The bacon here was a no-brainer as a stock up item. These froze incredibly well and my husband and son enjoyed them throughout the year. And this package of steak I bought in mine for a special meal. It turned out to be our Christmas meal that we shared with our extended family. My husband grilled it on our community grill and all the meat eaters in my family got a steak. They were very happy with their meal. Everybody was. It was a great Christmas. One thing I'll say about clearance shopping is that it brings new foods to the forefront. My son and husband really weren't open to trying lamb, so we passed on that deal. In other cases though, it works out. I bought this sage flavored sausage that they'd never had before, sauteed it with some cabbage for dinner, and they loved it. They were sad that I only bought two, but that's how things go sometimes when you're clearance shopping. We do go through quite a lot of dairy. We like to have spreadable cheese like cream cheese or ricotta cheese when we can find it at low prices. For harder cheese, I like to aim for around $2 a pound. I love the grocery outlet because they will mark down cheese heavily when it's near expiration. This two pound bag for under $3 was an excellent find and is one of the reasons that I love Grocery Outlet. 99 cent store is another great place to find inexpensive cheeses that even Grocery Outlet marks up to double the price. I think that's so sneaky of them. Maybe this is the reason their stock price isn't doing so well. 
For yogurts, usually stores will mark these down heavily when they're close to the date on them. Yogurt is something that I have no fear in eating even months beyond the date marked on their packages, particularly the ones with live and active bacteria. That's what keeps it good. As long as it's well sealed and stored at a proper temperature in the fridge, it will stay good. Just do the usual visual and sniff test. For cottage cheese though, I do keep those in the freezer and thaw them when we're ready to eat them. This only has a small impact to the texture it makes it more like a ricotta rather than a cottage cheese which we're completely okay with actually frozen and thawed cottage cheese is a great replacement for much more expensive ricotta cheese for non-dairy milks, we like this Planet Oat Milk that Kroger had a free coupon for, and coconut milk is another staple. For fun foods, I do like to visit Kroger right before we have guests over. They often have party type foods that they mark down heavily, and since we're eating it on that day, it's perfect. Any marked down fresh pasta, I'll buy and put in the freezer for us to enjoy at a later time. Stores often sell frozen pasta, so we can surely do the same at home. Seaweed is something that I'll I'll buy and for such a small amount these are some of the lowest prices that i've seen on equivalent products Pre-packaged snacks are something that I'll buy only at outlet stores and I try to pay less than 20 cents per serving on these. We don't always have time to make all of our foods on our own. I always have frozen pizzas in the freezer. The way I see this is they're pretty much equivalent to eating out so might as well pay less for it. And since we often host teenagers, these go really quickly. Same thing with frozen snacks. In moderation, I think they're okay. And we can't forget the tortilla chips. These are always nice to have on hand and can make meals more fun. For sweets, I do try to get these on discount as well. These ice creams were a good price and were nice for the summer months. And my son loves any sorts of agar agar candies like these grape jellies. For my last haul for 2019, it's from Aldi. I went the day after Christmas to fill in some items between house guests. We were like revolving in over here. How was your holiday? Did you have a lot of guests? Did you host or did you go to somebody else's house? We kind of did a little bit of both. Anyway, the avocados here were a great price, so I picked up on six of those to make guacamole. The grapes were also a great price. Our guests ate all of them before I could film my haul for you. And eggs were 99 cents per dozen, so I picked up their max of six. I also saw that their breads were clearanced with their discount stickers, so I looked around and even though I thought this one loaf was a great deal at effectively 49 cents, looking down the aisle, I found these sandwich thins that were $2 off, making them 29 cents per bag. I bought three bags of those for my son's lunches. I feel proud of myself, even though this entire tray of cookies would have cost me only 49 cents, I did pass it up because we don't have a need for any more cookies. All in all, I spent $18.30. Hopefully this gives you a more holistic view of the way I shop. We spend on average $200 a month for groceries for our family of three. Plus we often host family and my son's friends, so there's that. All said and told, I consider us to be more of a family of four or five if you count those in. And we did spend less this year than last year, so that's always nice. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you stuck with me to the end. I appreciate you very much. I wish you a happy new year, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!